beautiful like a fresco and fascinating for its idiosyncrasies, Street Fighter III Third Strike is a melting pot of both popular culture and fighting game design. This is the annotated Third Strike. As a fun social experiment, try asking people who the best character is in any given fighting game. Of course, everyone has their opinion, but unless the game is downright busted, it's hard to land on just one. Street Fighter II Turbo, for example, contains a powerful Ryu with fast fireball recovery and get out of jail free jumping hurricane kicks. However, a segment of fans will also point to Bison and Sagat, two boss characters that were maybe still balanced to stay that way. Still others, and there have certainly been tournament winnings to prove this, will look to Dalsim who was essentially reinvented with the addition of his teleport. For God's sake, Guile and Vega share re-dizzy combos. Everyone has an opinion, and often, everyone's right. Third Strike came at the end of an era unconnected from the internet, where broken gameplay and dramatically unfair advantages could have been patched out. For their part, Capcom would famously do the best they could to keep the competitive play balanced by updating their arcade games at a continuous clip. These range from, say, run-of-the-mill revisions to the arcade boards that would eliminate things like Urian's unblockable setups to all new editions of games, like the trajectory from the original Street Fighter II to Super Street Fighter II Turbo. This was an imperfect science, of course. Certainly, the developers had plans for how characters were going to play in relation to each other to whatever extent that they had envisioned them. Some, like Sean, were even made to just be bad. But design intent and the emergent gameplay from a wider audience sometimes combine to make kings out of men, as it were. And when people criticize Third Strike, they often roll their eyes and moan about one problem above all others. The game is horrifically balanced. The pipe dream that parries level the playing field be damned, a small cluster of characters really are far better than the rest. Two of them, in particular, are on a completely different plane. One of them, depending on who you ask and when, is wholly unfair. Yun is unfair. Part of this is by design. In an interview on the Capcom Fighters Network, Street Fighter III series producer Tomoshi Satomoto stated that Yun and his twin brother Yang were meant to be popular characters from the beginning. He says the designers wanted to emphasize their youth, and when making New Generation, the siblings were, quote, given the most consideration. This makes sense given what may be the visual inspirations for the characters. Though there hasn't been any official word on this from Capcom, Yun and Yang seem to share visual similarities to Duo and Troa from the anime Gundam Wing, which was finishing its initial run in Japanese television during New Generation's production. There's also fan speculation that he resembles pro skateboarding legend Kian Liu, especially since Yun is seen with a skate deck in his second Impact intro and post-fight dialogue. If these are both true, then identifiable youth culture was certainly a base. But back to the games, though. New Generation was ironically rushed to the market even after a somewhat protracted development cycle. And this meant that while Yun and Yang had distinct inspirations between them, they were different characters and aesthetics only, and shared an identical moveset. Players could choose between them and New Generation's character select screen by highlighting Yun and pressing either punch or kick buttons. When Street Fighter III was revised with Second Impact the later the same year, the twins diverged and had their own distinct gameplay. Longtime fans of the franchise see this as history repeating itself, as Ryu and Ken were just about identical in the original Street Fighter II and evolved separately and eventually dramatically over time. By Third Strike, the brothers played so differently that it was ever a wonder they were the same to begin with, and Yun himself being so loaded down with useful tools that even the game's most devoted fans wonder if he ultimately breaks it. But there's some history repeating itself in different behind-the-scenes kinds of ways. The Going Wisdom, which was later confirmed true by the Undisputed Street Fighter Coffee Table book, is that Hong Kong action star and Bruce Lee homage Fei Long was also intended to be two separate twin characters during the development of 1993's Super Street Fighter II, and chosen on the player select screen with either punch or kick buttons. American Capcom designer James Goddard argued against this, though, to provide the series with more cultural diversity with his design of DJ. It's likely that Yun and Yang in New Generation were a holdover from this original plan, but they were never 100% identical for what it's worth. The game is moved for New Generation confirms that there was some difference in the distances of their backdashes. Yun has always had an advantage. Much like what we saw with poor Sean, Yun in Third Strike is a product of slow evolution leading to a certain overcorrection. But on the complete opposite end of the spectrum compared to the Brazilian Shoto. 
Gion has a tool set that gives him plenty of room to work with in terms of movement, closing the distance and getting around projectiles viciously. His normals are good, if not particularly high damaging, and he has strong combo ending special moves that all lead to knockdowns. By themselves these are fine, but by no means overpowered. But like Yurian though, Yun is a character that emerged in competitive circles to use one super art and one super art alone, the Genagin. It's a super that essentially shatters the game in the right hands, making Yun a routine member of any Third Strike tournament winner's bracket. We'll dig into that in a moment of course, but for now let's expound on his actual character. Yun is Chinese for cloud or allow, depending on the written character used, and is a somewhat common surname. In the games, he's the older twin of Yang, but is often the more reckless of the two. According to Street Fighter Eternal Challenge, he and his brother are connected to the Chinese underworld, as his godfathers are crime bosses who leave the twins in charge to lead their unnamed small town. They seem to have led it justly and with good intentions, but their shared plot in Third Strike is to travel the world and test their skills before assuming their roles there. These skills are taught by their grandfather, the Wizened Yen, whom originated in Street Fighter 1 and later in the Street Fighter Alpha games. From a gameplay perspective, this makes some thematic sense, as both Yun and Yang have similarities to Gen's two respective playstyles. According to Eternal Challenge, this fighting system is Chinese Kenpo, something of a catch-all term for many forms of Kung Fu. Kenpo, which translates into fist method or way of the fist, is actually a Japanese term. It's the translation of Kanfa, a Chinese term that shares this fist method translation. Kenpo is what the Japanese term the system of Shaolin Kung Fu, after martial artist So Doshin combined it with jiu-jitsu in the mid-1940s. In Okinawa, the term is used also as something of a catch-all for a few systems of karate. As karate slowly migrated to the United States by way of Hawaii and California, Kenpo generally keeps the Okinawan meaning for the Japanese styles, which is why a Westerner will commonly see studios for both Kenpo Karate and Chinese Kenpo, which are often wildly different. Of course, Kung Fu, also known as Gong Fu or Wushu depending on the circles, is an umbrella term for many forms of Chinese martial arts. According to Wikipedia, fighting systems in China reach back some 4,000 years, with only a few of them formalizing slowly over the centuries. Its modern history tends to date back to what was known as the Boxer Rebellion in 1901, as China was fending itself off from foreign occupiers and Christian missionaries, and rebels were turning to fighting systems to defend themselves and to keep in shape. Many styles mimic the movements of animals and mythic beasts, which are somewhat formally called imitative styles. And these were the two forms practiced by Gen in the Street Fighter Alpha game, that of Mantis and Crane. As Yun and Yang diverged their gameplay starting in Second Impact, so too did their Kung Fu, into what are descendants of Gen's methods. It's a bit superficial though, since they share a common stance when fighting, and not the changes that their grandfather would assume when switching mid-match. Yun and Yang are yet more examples of the Street Fighter franchise recurring motifs of rivalry and brotherhood, both figuratively and literally. They push each other to be better fighters, as their second impact ending clearly demonstrates. This ending too also introduces the side character Hoimei, whom Yang loves from afar but is more attracted to Yun. She, her father, and her younger sister Xiaomei run the Shouryu Hen veggie stand, and we'll see them again in Yang's episode. The brothers fight each other again for another silent sub-boss rival match here in Third Strike, but Yun's actual ending is significant for other reasons. Thus far, we haven't seen any direct interactions with Gil, the main antagonist of the game, other than actually fighting him as last boss and his appearance in a comatose state in Yurian's ending. Here, Yun impresses the Illuminati leader to the point of having his grand scheme laid out before him. It's here that we find that Gil, while a maniacal sociopath, has a noble goal in mind to unite the world in peace, though under his messianic leadership. This is something that the twins quickly reject, but ponder over as they begin their return home. He shares his stage in Third Strike with his brother at a different time in the evening, the Hong Kong shopping district at 7.45 p.m. A bit brighter than when his brother fights here, notice that there are people shuffling around below them, just slightly out of view, and the Capcom logo at the top of the screen cut off by other signage. Notice too that Yang sometimes appears in the background if Yun is fighting here, but it isn't a static sprite. His head will always track where Yun is on the playfield. The stage is interesting because there's a sort of implied transition from his stages in New Generation and Second Impact. The first took place inside what is probably a restaurant, the next just outside its front door, and now here on the roof. The New Generation stage is interesting for fulfilling something that was mentioned in the Perry episode of this series to a certain extent. By ending around with a super art, a section of the background would crumble to reveal a statue of Sun Wukong, also known as Songoku, the famous monkey king from the classical Chinese novel Journey to the West. 
Yun also has two special match intros. The first where he and his brother handspring past each other, and then to exchange formal bows with Makoto. His voice actor is Kentaro Itoll, whom you may recognize from his work as Renji Abari from the anime Bleach. He also voiced Yun in Super Street Fighter IV Arcade Edition in 2012. He replaced another veteran anime and gaming voice actor, Wataru Takagi in Second Impact and New Generation, who also voiced Ryu and Hugo in those games. So let's get back to what makes Yun such a dominant force. He's one of the characters that has close proximity normal moves. Significant of which is his close medium kick, which acts as a juggle launcher. He also has a throw that tosses a character a fair distance too, and a hold move that can hit multiple times if the buttons are mashed, but an opponent can also mash out of it within 2-3 hits. Toward immediate kick will also act as his overhead to complement the universal one. Like Ibuki, another character that was practically engineered to be popular, he's also loaded down with target combos, five of them in fact, and one that's a two-hit jump in. He also has two very special command normals. The first is a palm attack with a hitbox on both sides, meaning it will tag an opponent even if they're behind you. The second is the dreaded dive kick. Executed by down forward and a kick button, the strength of the button will determine the angle of the dot. Compared to other dive kicks that we've seen so far, it only hits once, but is much faster than Necro's drill, and can also be executed outside of the jump's peak, which is the restriction that Akuma's dive kick is settled with. This means that Yun's is one of the best dive kicks in the game, and if used correctly, is a phenomenal weapon for both pressuring cornered opponents and suckering them into using unsafe anti-air attacks with proper deceptive spacing. Actually, spacing is something that Yun does better than almost anyone else in the game. His neutral super jump actually rocks him backward a little bit, which helps in his dive kick head games. His forward dash takes him a very good distance, and with an off-the-ground hop compared to other characters. His backdash, though, is abnormally lengthy to get him out of trouble. His quick stand is also the fastest wake-up in the game, too, making knockdown setups against him a bit harder compared to other characters. Yun is very, and very oddly, mobile. As his special moves go, the Kobokushi, or Tiger Strike attack, is executed by a reverse fireball motion and a punch button. It creates a fair amount of knockback if it lands, while eat fireballs like Alex's chops. It has a relatively slow startup, which good players can read and reliably swat away, but Yun can fake the move by executing the controller motion and two punches to bait out a parry attempt. This move can juggle launch characters when done in a corner. The Zensho Hoho is translated in internal challenge as technique to move without step, and it is his lunging punch. Easily comboed into from other moves, it's one of his common knockdown specials with an EX variation that hits twice and closes the distance between opponents much faster. It's unsafe on block, however. The Tetsuzanko or Iron Mine Lean is a shoulder attack that, under the right circumstances, can pass through projectiles with its EX variation. It's often used as a combo ender and a lead-in for super art use, which can also launch an opponent. The Nishokyaku or Flying Twin Kick is a two-hit up kick. Generally used as a combo ender, the second hit can also make it a worthwhile anti -herm. The EX variation grants some added height and distance and can also act as a juggle launcher. Finally, Yun has his command throw, called the Zempo Tension, or forward roll. By itself, it doesn't look like much, but when it connects, it gives Yun a free, if brief, window to land another hit. This, of course, means another combo, which, of course, will lead to more punishment. Alright, in aggregate, all of these things are good. He has a fair list of normals, good special moves that can make up for a lost space, and a downright oppressive dive kick game. Now, if you were to somehow make all of this noticeably and appreciatively better, you would find yourself with the Genagen, or Phantom Array, his third super art. It's a technique that strikes fear into the hearts of anyone that basically doesn't play as Yun in this game. And for its damage potential in high level game control, it's arguably the best super art in the game. Here's why. First, the frame data for his normal moves have been adjusted down, meaning they come out faster and have less recovery time. Because of this, they have a higher chance to link into each other, so almost all of his attacks can chain together. Many also gain juggle potential, so if Yun were to knock you into the air, which often happens during Genijin combos, you'll be kept there, since supers, as we've seen before, reset the juggle counter on the back end of the game's systems. Since this is a super art that we're talking about too, this means that every move has the highest priority in the game, and will beat out nearly everything else thrown at him unless the attack had invincibility frames attached to it, like Ken's EX Dragon Punch. 
Finally, the super meter to unleash this is hilariously small. Though we may lose out on some EX move potential as a byproduct, the length of the meter means that most players, if left alone to charge it or mount a strong early offense, can gen a gen within 10 to 15 seconds of a round. Good gen a gen setups can also leave just enough juggle opportunity with normal moves after the timer's over that a player can charge almost half a meter before the person on the receiving end hits the ground. It's nuts. All of this means the Gene Gen can bully an opponent, and even multiple times during a single round. The threat of the command throw will always loom over an opponent smart enough to just block the attack strings, so good young play armed with this super can typically always eke out some damage from a well-implemented Gene Gen, even if it's not a long devastating combo. But the Gene Gen, to be fair, is more of a tool than an attack, and must be used well for it to be of any use at all. While the alterations of his moveset certainly make for some creative gameplay, good Genagen combos take a significant amount of skill and practice to execute well. Further, young players have worked tirelessly over the decades to perfect optimal play against Third Strike's damage scale, which is this and many other fighting game systems of making sure multi-hit combos are not too damage intensive. Essentially, every move in a combo is slightly less powerful than the previous one on a sliding scale downward meaning if the first hit counts for 10 points, the next successive hit will count for 9, and then 8, all the way down to 1, even if it's all the same attack with the same base damage. While there are certainly efficient and even safer ways for players to engage in a Gen Gen, then the optimal way is to combo into it with as few hits as possible for maximum damage. Yun has one of the somewhat unique taunts in the game that give added stat bonuses the longer a player holds down the buttons. By spinning his hat, which also counts as a low hit point attack by the way, he'll increase his next attack or combo damage by a maximum of up to 50%. Since young players will often run away to the end of the screen to whiff normals for super meter, they can sometimes catch an opponent napping and pull off at least some of the taunt, making the Gen Gen ultimately more threatening. But this isn't a common method of play. This super is yet another weapon imported from other fighting games too, in this case the Street Fighter Alpha series where they're called custom combos. Though the alpha games equipped every character with them, the Street Fighter 3 series wisely relegated them to only a certain few. Both Yun and Yang had this a new generation before their movesets split, and it was overpowered in that game as well, as it opened up several character-specific infinite combos. Third Strike shortened the meter and made Yun's normals better in the Gen Agen state though, so while it was always good, it's dominant here. All of this is preposterous to consider, since his other two supers are actually very good. The Yo-Ho, which is not pronounced how most Westerners expect, translates into Frying Roast, according to the Eternal Challenge art book. A super with a long meter and a very high damage output, a player can juggle another hit during the fall for even more damage. The second, the Sodai Rengeki, or Rapid Thunder Spear Attack, is another auto combo that can be easily cancelled into from his normal hits. At its maximum, it can hold up to three stocks, which means that Yun has the most EX options with this choice. But, like other characters in the game that are defined by one specific super art, these moves are only brought up in conversation for not being the Gen Agent, something that has been and will foreseeably stay the doomsday weapon of the game. Again, it takes serious commitment and practice to play and use it effectively. Yun, for his part, is also a fragile character, with health that falls on the low end compared to the rest of the cast. For many players though, Yun, his toolset, and the dreaded Gen Agen aren't just in the top tier of the characters in Third Strike, it's a strata unto itself, whether they think it's fair or not.